Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is Wednesday night, which of course means one thing. It is match preview showtime. And for the second time this season, I'm pleased to announce that I'm joined by Dave Salmon. He is a Morecambe fan. He is the voice of radio and I follow for Morecambe on a match day. And of course, like I said, it is the second time he's been on this season. He came and joined me for the 2-1 Jules win back in September, courtesy of goals from Jules Lapsley and that absolute belter from Conor Mahoney. <laughs> Dave, I saw you making the sign. How are you, mate? You good? I'm all right, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me back on, and thank you very much for reminding me about that. Although it was a good winning goal from Conor Mahoney, you have to say. A very good winning goal from Conor Mahoney, to be fair. Yeah, and we scored two in the first half, which is something of a, a rarity. Um, any goal in the first half at Priestfield in the league this season is, has been a rarity. So, yeah, that was the anomaly. Um, good place to start is always recent form. So, we we'll start with Morecambe first, being the home team. Last six has garnered seven points from 18 available. Um, yeah, that was a draw against Grimsby at home. A good win away at Crewe by three goals to two and then a, a narrow, hard-fought victory over Crawley by one goal to nil. But then, unfortunately, that's preceded three defeats on the spin against Wrexham by three goals to one. Newport, 5-3 in a crazy game. And most recently, Sunday, in fact, um, Salford beat you by three goals to one. So you currently sit 12th with 54 points from 38 games available. Dave, the Jills just quickly were run through. Six gamers garnered eight points, so not a great deal of difference. Wins against Wrexham and Salford by 1-0 and 2-0 respectively. There's then been a pair of defeats, both by two goals to nil away at Barrow and Wimbledon and a pair of one-all draws at home to Tranmere and Grimsby Town. So very much of a muchness from the Jills and we currently sit 10th, 56 points from 39 games. Um, let's start with Jed Brennan, Dave. On this occasion, um, it's, it's both sides coming into this fixture with with new managers compared to the reverse fixture back in the summer. It was a very warm September day, if I remember correctly, and I think the week after was even hotter. It was it was ridiculously balmy. Um, so yeah, the last time we met, I believe it was it was Neil Harris and Derek Adams. It's now going to be Jed Brennan up against Stephen Clements. Twenty seventh of November, he was appointed, and in that time, you played twenty one times in the league. One seven, drawn six, lost eight, scored thirty two, and conceded thirty nine, and taken twenty seven points. Um, I guess it was always going to be tough following Derek Adams, considering what he's done previously with the club. So, is I guess my question is: Is Jed Brennan the man to take you forward into next season? Is this season now not a write off because you're still in contention mathematically? Um, but I'd put us both down in the possibility camp rather than the probability camp if you was asked are we going to get in the playoffs either so I just wanted to get your thoughts on on, on Jed Brennan and, and what he's done so far how he's changed anything um, and, and what your hopes are for for 24 25 if, if you do miss out on the top seven this season well first and foremost mate it's so tight isn't it it's, oh, it's so tight Absolutely it's, ridiculous. I've, I've never known a, a, a division any division with so many teams still with with a genuine chance oh, you say it's an outside chance I suppose in in, in one way it is because there's lots of teams all fighting for that, and I suppose it's going to be the, the teams with the, with the biggest squads and those who can who can bring players back, perhaps, and and have got that depth that that might be in the top seven. I would say the top five are probably pretty much nailed on in whichever order they're going to finish. And I, I think there's another what seven or eight teams fighting it out for those two other spots in sixth and seventh place really there's going to be twists and turns those loads loads of I'd say yeah it's probably down come, to, think. probably down to you now. I think it's just starting to shrink that list. I think a couple of weeks yeah. ago, it was probably down to about 15th, 16th. Yeah, and you look absolutely. at Wimsall a month ago, one three on the bounce and went from 16th into the playoffs. But now if you look at Morecambe are 12th, played the same games as Notts County in 13th, but got three points extra. And then the teams all below that have played 38, 39, and they're starting to just, the gap's just starting to open up. So I, I think it's fair to say it's probably from Morecambe upwards. Like you say, from, from Morecambe in, in 12th to to Barrow in sixth is seven points. Or I know there's a lot of confusion because a lot of teams have played different amount of games. So it's probably going to be another couple of weeks or so before we start getting a truer reflection of it. But yeah, to still have seven teams fighting out for two playoff places, if that's what it's going to be, is, is crazy with, with less than 10 games to go. Now, when we played you back in September, Matt, it was actually Jeb Brannan's first game as part of our coaching staff. He was brought in by Derek Adams. He was uh, in charge of the Akron's and Stanley Academy there under mm -hmm. 23. So he came in. Uh, there was a, a vacancy in our backroom staff and, and 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 Jed Brannan filled it. And obviously when then Derek left, not so long after, there was speculation about who was going to take over. I think in reality, with everything we've got going on behind the scenes, with our mm -hmm. ongoing ownership issues and our financial problems, 
it was always going to be an internal appointment. Now, yep. some people would would say that's a cheap option, and maybe on one hand, perhaps it is. It's an easy way, isn't it? You know, you stick with what you know, well liked among the club, give you give internal appointments a chance to, to to sort of show what they can do. But I think it was a lot more than that, really, because he came in with a, a great reputation, and although he'd never managed in the EFL before or even coached, he had worked with senior professional players for a good number of seasons and of mm-hmm. course he had a, a very good track record as a player you might remember him play for Tranmere and I think he went his nearly million pounds when he signed for Manchester City in the late 90s so he had good pedigree as a player excellent pedigree as a coach and I didn't think personally it was uh, it was quite the left field appointment that's or the cheap option appointment that somebody or some of the members of the fan base perhaps thought that, that it was really and in terms of the results it's been a bit of a mixed bag. It took him a little while to to settle in. We got hammered six 0 away at Wrexham in his first game in charge, which wasn't a wasn't a great start, but uh, it picked up after that. We went into two thousand and twenty four, uh, and for the first couple of months, we were doing pretty well. Actually, we we've been hovering around the playoffs. The closest we got to breaking into the top seven was just outside on goal difference, and uh, we've been there a couple of times, a point off. I'm not sure it's a good thing to go in, Dave. I, just it's, it's I think as soon as someone goes in there, they just wet the bed and fall straight this back is it. out. And this is why it's so close. This is why it's going to be so exciting until now in the end of the season. I, think I guess the, the ideal time to go in there is probably 5 o'clock, 27th of April. Because <laughs> yeah. then you've got no chance of falling back out. Well, it, it was it, it was it was a strange old few weeks because I say we got to, just before New Year, we got hammered 5-0 away at Notts County. And that was their manager, Luke Williams, last game before he then left for Swansea. And obviously they've fallen off a cliff since then. And uh, we thought at that point, well, season is what it is, isn't it? And we lost all of our loan players in the January transfer window. Uh, all five of our young loan stars, including our 15 goal top scorer, Michael Mellon. They all went back. Uh, we then sold another one of our young forwards, Adam Mayer, to Millwall in the championship at the end of the window. Uh, we lost our goalkeeper to long-term injury, lost our club captain to long-term injury. So we had uh, quite a, a rebuild job on our hands, really. But as 2024 has gone on, apart from the last few weeks, which we, we've we been a bit of a disaster, really, for various reasons, I think we only lost twice in 12 games, I think it was. We were drawing quite a few, not that many wins, but we were getting enough points to stay in and around the playoff mix. And it's been one of those strange couple of weeks where we've now lost three on the spin. And despite losing three on the spin, and don't get me wrong, Sunday against Salford, we were utterly dreadful. We were abject from start to finish, from, from 1 to 11, really. Nobody can really say they played well on that day. Probably the worst Morecambe performance for, for for a few years, actually, all things considered. Um, a couple of other defeats. The, the Newport, we probably should have won. Um, we came back from 3-1 down in the second half to, to level it up at, at 3 all. And we then missed the City to make it 4-3. They scored and then got a breakaway goal at the end. Um, and, and then we've had another um, defeat, probably undeserved, against Wrexham when they came to our place. They, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Matt. They just... Well, let's just say... I wouldn't say they cheated... But let's just say they push the envelope of the laws of the game to the very, very end, as I suppose the Phil Parkinson team does. So we'll leave it at that. Um, so we lost three on the bounce. But despite that, we're still right in the mix. It's it's, it's absolutely bizarre. So if you're going to say to me, is the season fizzling out to a quite steady conclusion? I, I'm not sure it is. Ask me in three weeks' time. If we've not picked up too many more points, then perhaps it might be different. But uh, I think at the moment, still very much everything to play for, yeah. Yeah, and Easter, I think, would be crucial to everyone mm. because it's, you know, by then we'd have played, everyone would have played at least another three fixtures and, and before you chuck in people that have still got to play Tuesdays. I mean, we've got, we've got no Tuesday games now left. We're up to, we're, we're on the, where we should be in terms of 39 fixtures being yeah, played. So, we, yeah. so it's going to be whether that helps teams because they now get a full week between, between fixtures aside from the Easter period and that type of thing. So yeah, it's going to be interested. And I was like, this is why we get people like yourself on because, we wouldn't know all about that in terms of what Brennan's had to, to put up with since coming in on a full-time basis in terms of all the players going back and the injuries. And I know it's been documented on social media, the stuff about what's going on behind the scenes, the non-football inside of it. And of course, as much as people come out and say, oh no, it, it doesn't have an effect. We come in and we just go about our business and we train. I think it does because you can you can hear it going on. It's, it's noise. It might be white noise to a degree, but it's it's still something that's that's in the background that you don't want in the background because you're all trying to concentrate and you're all meant to be pulling in the same direction. 
it permeates down, Matt. There's no no doubt about that. And I, I think Jed Brannon and his and, and, the, and the the coaching team try their very best to sort of block that out and try and shield the players. But you can't help but be affected by it. everybody's on social media. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody mm-hmm. sees the rumours and you know there's little bits and bobs that you see behind the scenes and that. And I think if you are in a situation where you are 100% categorically sure that you're going to be paid every single month. Now, th- th- there's been no issues in that regard, by the way, mm-hmm. um, this season. There was last season. This season's been okay. Um, you can't give it your absolute best. And if you don't know from one week to the other where whether there's going to be a takeover or whether the, there's going to be a new owner and they're going to bring a new manager in or, or what the heck's going on, mm-hmm. that's got to disturb any team, hasn't it? And and I can't, if you've got a spare four days, I can probably tell you all about Morecambe's behind the scenes issues, but uh, suffice to say, we have been up for sale for the best part of two years now. Mm-hmm. Um, the only realistic offer that the current owner has entertained to our knowledge, to our public knowledge, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, of course, but mm-hmm. to the public knowledge uh, is to a guy who um, evidently cannot prove to the EFL that he has any money. Uh, because if he if he had the money uh, and it was from a, a creditable source, the takeover would have been complete and by gone, now. Yeah, of course. Um, the fact remains that he's not satisfied the criteria. So uh, hopefully things are going to move in the right direction in terms of our ownership. I think we're going to be looking probably more towards the summer and next season now, if that's going to happen. If it does happen sooner, it probably won't affect things this season. It can't really, can it? Because our squad not is in what terms it is, of transfers isn't it? now, so, no, because uh, it's only free agent markets that you can exactly, look at. And with exactly. seven the games to go, how much of an effect can they really have? Exactly. Uh, although that said, we have picked up a couple of really good mm-hmm. free agents. Uh, one in particular I'll tell you about in a, in a while. But uh, overall, I think we should be pretty pleased, really, with where we are. I mean, given the fact that in the summer, when we got we got relegated uh, out of League One on the last day of the season, uh, last yeah. May, and everybody apart from five players were out of contract. So we started the summer with five players, no playing budget, complete uncertainty as to what was going to go on. Mm-hmm. And uh, from nowhere, we've built a squad, not once, but twice, that's competing at the right end of the League Two table. So for me personally, I'm, I'm in a really fortunate position where I see every second of every game home and away. So... Yeah. You get to really know the players and get to know who they are as individual footballers, if you like. To have the quality that we've got in the squad, I wouldn't rule anything out at the moment. Yes, we, our season might taper off into a mid-table finish, mm-hmm. but the fact remains, per, for our point of view, we've got in the next week or two, by Easter weekend, we've got four, four key players who would be regular first-team starters on mm-hmm. any given week who have been long-term injured, they are all going to be, well, fingers crossed, I think they are, they're all going to be available over Easter and then for the run-in. So that's going to be like four new signings for us and four good new player signings as well. We've also got to play a number of teams around us in in the mix, including yourselves on Saturday. We've still got to play Crew. We've still got to play Barrow. We've still got to go away to Stockport. So it's very much in our own hands, really. And do you know what, Matt? I think there is plenty riding on, on, on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be a, we'll see how we go, the season's going to be drifting by a long way. No, and I've said on a couple of episodes regarding Jules, I, I keep saying it, it's likely to go to the final day. Like there's, I think there still could be Absolutely. four teams that are involved yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and might need something on the final day to jump in and some that are trying to avoid defeat or whatever to, to not fall out, like we've already mentioned. So, yeah, and I suppose if you could, no disrespect for the two teams, but if, you, if you're if you in in with a shot with the final two games, you, you'd have hand-picked... Forest Green at home and, and Swindon away in terms of where I know they're going to be fighting for I suppose Swindon would be the ones that you'd say would be on the proverbial beach Forest Green could be a different one because they might be still trying to stay out of out of the drop zone but if if they need a win they're going to have to be open from the off so that could come into your hands as well so yeah but looking at the teams you play like you say us Atkinson are probably out of it now but Barrow Doncaster in form and then Crew Stockport that's yeah I think you're going to know after Stockport, where you're going to end up this Absolutely. season. But yeah, it's, it's the same as us. We've still got to play a few of them. If you go through the, the, the league table, we've still got to go Mansfield. We've still got to play Crew at home. We've still got Barrow at home. We've still got you Saturday. So it's, 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 it's in our hands as well. And these are the games you want to be playing in, aren't they, at any level? To, to have something riding on it for to be going upwards rather than to try and not slip through the trapdoor. I think this... This is definitely what you would call the business end of the season now. There's Absolutely. no question about that. And eight games and, and to go and, and, and downwards, I think definitely is the business end, isn't it? Yeah. 
it comes to me to the start to the time of the season, Matt, where you start to think how many points are going to get inside that top seven, given all the factors of who's playing who. And I think at the start of the season, I would I would say around the 75 mark. I think, I think now... Take five, I think you can take five off. I think 70 is going to absolutely be enough. I think 70 will be the benchmark for seventh place. You look at us, we've got, what, 54 points and you've got 56. So we've got eight games to go. We probably need to win five five of them and, and a draw or or six of them and two defeats, I would say. That would probably yeah, be trying to work ours It's out a tall well. order. It's a tall order, that, isn't it? And, and, and you look at yourselves, 14 points, I reckon, from your remaining games. 14 points from seven that's two points a game isn't it so that that's probably automatic promotion form but mm-hmm. it's the same for every team in the mix and and i think that's why it's going to be so exciting i think like you say whether me whether morecambe or gillingham are in that final day scenario remains to be seen but i, I think three or four or more teams are definitely going to be fighting at the, on the final day and like you say the beauty of it as well which you chuck into it is there's so many teams that keep playing each other so it could mm-hmm. keep in that final total down as well if they keep taking points off each other. But yeah, I was trying to work. I was like, I said five. If we win five, that gets us to 71. And then you can almost give away the last two. Or is it four wins and three draws? That could get you in as well. So there's very little margin for error. But like you say, that's the same for probably half a dozen clubs. Absolutely. And that's what makes it so exciting, Matt, isn't it? And, and that's why the games against your promotion playoff rivals, I suppose, that's why they're certainly cannot get beaten. And I don't think either side can afford defeat on Saturday. I'm not saying they would take a draw by any stretch of the imagination. I fully expect us to go and try and get the win on Saturday, mm-hmm. being the home team, if nothing else. And the other thing that plays into our hands is out of our eight games, we've got five of the eight at home, which will, in terms of travel, I mean, we've got some tough, tough teams coming to us, but we've not got far to travel. Apart from Swindon on the last game of the season, the other seven, we've got five homes and then we've got two short trips to, to Stockport and Accrington and 45 minutes each each trip from from, from North Lancashire. So uh, we're in business on, on, on that point of view. Uh, but it does mean that when we play teams around us like yourselves, it, 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 I think that it means there's a lot riding on it, to be honest. And, and we definitely yeah. can't get beaten. We definitely can't. If, if we lose on Saturday, I would start to question whether it will. I mean, that said, it's, it's the roller coaster, isn't it? Absolutely. I think I've used the phrase must not lose more than I've used must win in the last few weeks. But eventually we'll have to start saying must win because there'll be so few games to play. But I think we keep trying to avoid it. You talk about home form when you've got to play five out of eight at home, I think it is. But but how concerning is the home form at the moment? Because I think I've worked it out. It's only two in the last 10 at the Mazuma, um, Sutton and Crawley Town, I think, if I've done my research mm. correctly. Um, and like you've said, five of your last eight are on your home patch. So would that be a little bit of a concern given the fact that you've not been picking up wins regularly? on your own patch as the, as the season, like you've already alluded to, is, is, is very much coming into the final furlong. Our home form's been a bit of an enigma, to be honest, Matt. We we started like a train at home. Nobody could beat us. We were a fortress at the Mazuma. And by absolute coincidence, um, Jed Brannan's first home game in charge was our first home defeat of the season. We, we And that was straight off the back of when we got Wallop 6-0 away at Rex and Newport turned us over. Undeservedly, really, that they had two shots and scored two goals on that night. Uh, but we lost our away um, our unbeaten home record. And uh, since then, it has been a bit up and down. We've drawn a lot of home games mm-hmm. and uh, we've lost a couple that we should have we should have won. We've drawn a couple that we um, probably might have not got anything from. So it's been it's been a bit of, up, of an up and a downer. But I think if you take everything into account, you'd rather be playing at home with your home fan base behind you. You haven't got to worry about travel, not got to worry about overnight stays or anything like that. Because I think one of the reasons why we, part of the reason why we have lost three in a row coming into this one is we have clocked up a lot of miles. And I can say as a member of the media, going to away games, it takes it out of you. Um, we, we had to travel to Newport County last Tuesday. The team went down on the Monday, stayed over, all, obviously spent all day Tuesday in Newport. I got into bed at quarter to four in the morning, so the players would have been a similar time in bed. They had a day off, and then obviously we were playing Salford on the weekend, and and, and I, you, you become jaded. It doesn't matter how fit you are as a professional athlete. I've that said that even as just being a fan. Really, ta- oh, Absolutely. It really takes it out of you. So, regardless of of our form on at home, I think the fact that we can sleep in our own beds and we've not got far to come, I think that has to be an advantage. Only time will tell. It will indeed, mate. 
It will indeed. Uh, but we're we're, di- we're we're a different animal, Matt. We're a different animal to the side that played you in September. That's for sure. Well, like you say, yeah, it's probably half a team that's completely different, isn't it? You can, if you take in those that have left and those that are out injured and unavailable, it's going to be an interesting game. And I'll say we're pretty different as well in terms of, you know, there's been new signings and that type of thing. And we've got a few injuries as well. Um, one other thing I want to put down, and I've, I've got it down as the, enlisted in the concerns category, is, is, is recent defensive form. Obviously, you don't want to be shipping 3.6 a game over a, an extended period coming into the final straight. But you, you've done that, conceded 11 in the last three, losing the lot against sides that have been in decent form is the caveat. So it's not like you're getting turned over by rubbish. I mean, Wrexham are likely to get promoted. Salford have picked up massively under under Carl Robinson and, and Newport have had a decent season as well. Similar position to ourselves. Um, but is that a bit of worry considering, yeah. like I said, 11 in the last three? And I think there's only four teams in the entire division have conceded more than your 65 and, and three of them are in the bottom six. The problem we've had is we've not had a settled back four for a while for, for mm. various reasons, injuries, suspensions and, and, and whatnot. But the reality is our goals against column doesn't make for pretty reading at the moment. And um, the, the uncomfortable truth is that a lot of the goals we've conceded, we should have done better. It, it, it's as simple as that, really. I'll tell you, the, those 11 that you refer to in the last three games, one was a penalty. So mm-hmm. you can take that out of the equation. Yep. The other one, which was Newport's fifth goal in their 5-3 win, we went kamikaze, including goalkeeper, up from the back from a free kick. They cleared it and then ran and then tapped okay. it in. So you can't really count that one either. The other nine, we should have defended better. I'm not saying we should have defended all nine and not conceded any of them. But yep. our Achilles heel in recent weeks has been low crosses from from wide positions. We've not stopped the cross, certainly low crosses. And and Salford noticed that on, on Sunday to the extent where they dropped Matt Smith, who's got 24 goals to his name this season. Obviously, we all know he's a massive target. Man, get the ball in the air to him. But they dropped him because they realised we need some more nimble footwork up front, get the ball in from low. And it paid dividends that, that they won the game. Mm-hmm. They won at a canter. They, 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 Salford were, were ordinary, really. They, they, weren't, they weren't great. They weren't great, but they didn't need to be great because we were terrible, unfortunately, on, on that occasion. So defensively, it is a worry. If you've got, uh, I know you've got, you're going to say Romeo Hutton, aren't you, straight away. Um, if, if you can get the ball in from wide, we will struggle to deal with it. We've got a problem at left back at the moment. Um, one of our other main central defenders, Farron Rawson, won't be playing on Saturday either because he's on one of those four players coming back from injury. So, uh, yeah, that 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 is a concern. Um, when you go away and you score three goals like we did at Newport last Tuesday, you should win. You should win, really, shouldn't you? <laughs> and Absolutely. It's simple, yeah. and unfortunately, uh, we didn't. Interesting, then, because because we went to a back four last week, obviously with off the back of Conor Masterson being suspended, which means that we played two. Well, I'd say one orthodox winner in Conor Mahoney. Johnny Williams is a slightly different animal because he, he plays off the left and he, he likes to float around and tuck inside. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see, especially if you've got a problem at left back, because for me, Conor Mahoney, pound for pound, is he's one of the best wide men in the division. So that'd Well, be let me talk battle. about left back to you, Matt, and I'm going to say the words Disco Dave Tatonda at you. I love Dave Tatonda. I love now, Dave is <laughs> He is almost certainly, I mean, I say almost certainly, if we continue persevering with a back four has as Jed at four two three one has been our stock yep. formation under Jed Bannon. Yep. If we play four two three one on Saturday, the only other central defensive option, uh, sorry, left back option, uh, is is a guy called Max Melbourne. He did his hamstring uh, against Salford on Sunday. So he's almost certainly out. That means David Satonda would almost certainly slot him to that position. Okay. If we were to play, um, switch it around and try and plug the defensive gap and then maybe play a back three, which I'm not sure we will because I say we have, we've only got two real recognised central defenders fit at the moment, unless we drop Jan Songo perhaps into the back three. Then he, even then he might play as a left wing back perhaps. So I would say there's a very, very strong possibility that David Satonda is going to be on the left side of our defence on Saturday. Whether we play a back four, or we play about three, and you're going to say Conor Masterson's going to run rings around him, aren't you? I suppose. Conor Mahoney was has, has been decent. Yeah, he was. He came off the bench against Tranmere when we switched to a back four a couple of home games ago, and was the best player on the pitch second half. And he was he was at the heart of, of pretty much everything we did well against Grimsby mm-hmm. last week. So, 
it'd be interesting because that's what we played a four two three one, and I think Ollie Hawkins would probably start. But we had what we had was George Lapsley being was very good and doing something that we've not done enough of was from the number ten role was just anticipating everything that that Hawkins bought into his chest or flicked on, so we was able to get in behind teams quicker. Where so if we can do that and you've got plenty of people missing, then it could be a, a fruitful afternoon. But obviously, we've got to come there and work hard and earn the right to be able to do that anyway. Um, two people I want to speak about, Dave, before we get on to team news and what potential lineups are going to be. Obviously, Michael Mellon was, was one that was very good in the first half of the campaign. I think he got 13 in 22 in the league before being recalled and then sent to, to Dundee, I think, in the SPL. Um, I think he scored recently against Celtic. Um, unfortunately, yeah. Celtic had already scored seven by that point. Um such is the nature of that division. But yeah, him and, and JJ McKeonan were two that, that were very sort of much on everyone's lips at the beginning of the season. McKeonan, I think, has been injured since the start of the, the turn of the year. So is he is he one of them four that you've already mentioned? Yeah. And, and just, how, just how big a miss have they been? Huge, huge. It's 20, um, 20 goals, isn't it, that are, by my calculations, that have been taken out of the team since the turn of, since 2023 turned into 2024. Michael Mellon got recalls partway through the window we always thought he might and uh, Burnley and Dundee have got uh, a, 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 an official partnership uh, like b- between them and, and as part of that I think Burnley is sending their young players on loan to Dundee so it was always okay. nailed on really it's probably going to go there it was either going to go to Dundee or to Ross County when when Derek Adams made the move to Ross County but uh, we were gutted to lose him it's a lot of goals to lose isn't it 15 goals in all competitions before Christmas and he was I think, really... if, we lose tw- I think if we lose 20 we'd be in the minus he was really looking the part, really, really looking the part. And uh, we worried about were we going to be able to replace him. And I think all things considered, I'm not I'm not convinced that we have, actually, to, to be honest. We're not, not directly. Other players no. have chipped other players have chipped in. Um we've got Jed Garner on loan from Barrow. He's done like, I think he's got five goals on since he since he done since he started. He's either anonymous or he's great. It doesn't, it, there's no in between with Jed. Hopefully he's going to have a great game on Saturday because he scored some great goals for us. Um, but apart from that, we've not really got anything what you would call an out and out goal scorer in the squad at the moment. JJ McKinnon uh, did his ankle on New Year's Day mm-hmm. and has been out ever since. It looked quite innocuous, really, just, to, just, just a little twist as he hobbled off. And then that, that became a three month and in a boot and all sorts of fun and games. So hopefully JJ is going to be back we think over the Easter weekend, unless he is ready for this weekend and they're keeping it a, a bit hush hush. I believe he's about a week away though. So I think Saturday is going to come slightly too soon, but the two huge misses because he was just starting to, in the number 10, in the, in the roving number 10 role, he was just starting to, uh, to, to, to really hit his straps. We have replaced him. We've got a guy on loan from Wigan and he's not the, the only one with no EFL experience who we've got in on loan, but We've got a guy called Joe Adams in from Wigan. Never played um, seeing at EFL football before. So he's young, he's raw, he's got bags of talent, but of course he's very rough around the edges at the moment. Watch out for him. He, uh, he'll he he'll be the, the number 10. He'll sort of roam around everywhere, try and link things up. And then we've got uh, a guy called Guion Edwards, who you might be familiar with. Oh, yeah. Who, um, Crawley, Ipswich and Peter. Yeah, yeah, Crawley, Ipswich. And he's been around the block. He's got about 350 senior games of football under his belt. And uh, he had a, he was one of these where he had a serious injury at the end of last season, got released by Wigan, and nobody picked him up. So when we managed to sign him as a free agent outside of the transfer window, it was almost disbelief, really, that how the heck have we managed to get somebody of this calibre and why has nobody signed him before now? It's taken a little while to get up to full fitness. He was only used quite sparingly off the bench, I think to manage his minutes and to make sure he didn't, didn't break down again, really. So, so, so to keep him fit for the rest of the season. But he's starting games now. I fully expect he's going to start on Saturday. And um, he will just get the ball uh, and he will run at you rapidly. He is the, one of the fastest players I have ever seen in any division with the ball at his feet. And he sh- like left or right? He will play predominantly on the right. He'll play the right. If, if we go 4-2-3-1, he will be the right side of the three. So it could um, be the, two, the two key battles then could be right mm, winger up against respective yeah. left back, which would be interesting. I think so. I think Max so. Clark, um, I don't think it's blessed without an out pace, mm, so it, that that could be a good battle as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, there, that's our main attacking threat, I would say. Hopefully, Jed Garner's going to have a good game. We've got uh, we picked up Jordi Hewula as well on a, a as a free agent. Mm-hmm. Um, he started for the first time against Salford on on Sunday. 
wasn't great, pretty quiet, to be honest, got taken off at half time. But then he came off the bench against Newport the, on the Tuesday before and uh, he could, probably could have had a hat trick. So if he gets a goal, hopefully that's going to kick him on. But we haven't got a, a Michael Mallon prolific scorer in the squad um, since uh, since the transfer window, unfortunately. So uh, other people have had to chip in from elsewhere. But uh, yeah, watch out for Goyon Edwards. He's going to take some stopping. Yeah, some player at the level, if you can keep him fit. Mm. So your team last Sunday was Mayer in goal. It was a back four of Senior Stokes, Badeau and Melbourne. It was then Kambeni and Songu protecting. Trio of Garner Adams and Edwards behind Jordi Hawula. So you've already mentioned Max Melbourne's likely to be unavailable. So you think David Tatonda comes in there. Can you see any other changes or do you think he'll, he'll stick predominantly with, with how that team lined up? I think there will be a couple of changes. I'm not expect. I mean, that this is the bit where there'll be six changes on Saturday, but I, I think Jed likes to stick with his preferred players. I think if there are going to be any changes, it might be to the formation. We, we, we might play, might go to a back three slash back five to try and shore the defence up perhaps. Mm -hmm. But saying we go four, two, three, one, it will be Archie Marion. Goal is tall. He's six foot six, big lanky keeper. It's his first EFL loan. You might remember he saved two penalties for not County in the playoff final last season. That's that, that, that's oh, him. Yep. Um, but he's a really good keeper. He's going to have a great career. Joel Senior at right back is another one to watch out for, Matt. He's, he's, he's by far and away our player of the year. Well, uh, if from Carlisle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember watching him in the playoffs he's, last season. He's, he was he's, really good. I was surprised he's great. Him. He is great. He, he's like roadrunner up and down the right side. So him and Edwards, if they can combine together, might be in business. And then it'll be uh, the veteran, well, I'll say veteran, he's only 31, I think, Chris Stokes and Jacob Badeau in the middle, probably to Tonda on the left, because I say we haven't got a great deal of other options, really. We have been playing Jacob Badeau at left back a few times, but that was when we had more central defenders available in mm -hmm. the middle. Uh, with only two fit centre-halves, I think it'll be to Tondra on the left. He's been really good for us on the whole, I have to say. He's been great. And I'd really love him to stay next season. I don't know whether he's been offered a deal or not, but the last couple of games, he's been a bit ragged, to say the least. And he, he wasn't great. Although, that's, that's not, not, not on the team were on Sunday either. I think he's another one who's either like a 4 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. I don't think you get much in the middle with Davies either. I think sublime to the ridiculous. If it ever summed up a footballer, that would be it. And then we'll have uh, Jan Songo in the middle. Uh, Nelson Kumbeni is a guy, uh, another young player on loan from Bolton Wanderers. Again, uh, because of our financial situation, we've had to pick up these loan players and, and, and give them their first taste of EFL football. Looks great. Again, rough around the edges. Needs to work perhaps a little bit on things like tracking back and uh, and that kind of stuff. But uh, lo loves to get the ball with his back to his own goal and, and progress us up the pitch you know you, you know these at central these uh, central midfielders defensive midfielders they'll just play a sideways or a backward pass while nelson is always looking for a forward ball which is which okay. is great if we play four two three one it will jed garner will probably be the central striker guion edwards on the right joe adams will be in the number 10 without any question and then it's whether we play jordan slew who's been a bit of an enigma for us this season. Probably one of our players of the year, actually, is Slew. He's, uh, uh, I think he was. Uh, there was a bit of consternation when he re-signed because we, we got him out of non-league. He, he was part of our promotion-winning squad three years ago under Derek, and then he re-signed him again in the I summer. I remember speaking about Slew mm. with you and Tom yeah. outside the preschool yeah, yeah. for the reverse fixture, and it, you said that at the time everyone was like, mm. Mm. But he's, sure he's, he's get, gone yeah. on to have a brilliant season. He's probably best as an impact sub, I have to say, because obviously because of he's quite he's quite muscular and physical. Yeah, coming on against tired legs after an hour is probably the best weapon. So there might be a start for Julian Larson, um, who is on loan from uh, Nottingham Forest. That's his first okay. EFL loan. He's not really hit the heights, Julian. He's shown flashes of what he can do, and being at a Premier League club, he's clearly a very good player, but. Uh, Needs to be a bit more physical, I think. He's been bullied out of games a little bit. So he might start. Charlie Brown might start as well. Um, so uh, we, we do have options. We, we've not got a, a massive amount that, that we can change, to be honest with you. I think it'll be very similar personnel, perhaps with a, a back three instead of a instead of a back four. But uh, I would imagine we'll go 4-2-3-1. And Jed's going to have worked really, really hard this week on just stopping the low crosses from wide. Because if we can do that... Uh, we are electric. We can be absolutely breathtaking in the final third. Make, make no mistake about that. If it clicks for oh, us yeah, on scored, Saturday, scored plenty as well have conceded. If it clicks yeah. on Saturday, Matt, you, you're going to have all sorts of problems. You really are. If it doesn't, and we're a bit shaky at the back, you might be in for a good afternoon.
as we said already, only time will tell. In terms of the deals, there's, there's obviously the, the trio that are still out is, is Josh Andrews, John Jeffries and, and Jorge Atado. So they're not going to be available. Assuming this sickness bug that affected us last week has cleaned up. I can't see Stephen Clements hopefully making too many changes as well. So I'm I'm hoping he sticks with the back four. So the four, two, three, one. If I was to make one change, I'd maybe take out Tim Dieng, who's just been off the pace for me in the last couple of weeks, and, and, and could get Ethan Coleman back in, because I think if you asked 100 Jules fans, 99 say that he's been our player of the year. But for me, it'd be Glenn Morris in goal, back four of Hutton, Aimer, Ogie and Clark. I'd then play Mackenzie and Coleman sitting and protecting, because then if we need to go to a back five, we can put Mackenzie in as a centre-half. He's done it before. I'd then have Mahoney, Lapsley and Johnny Williams, and I'm sure they're going to be supporting Ollie Hawkins, because I think he plays a big part in how, in how Stephen Clemens wants us to play. So probably only one change for us in terms of where we were last Saturday. The dreaded last question, Dave, before I let you go and enjoy your Wednesday evening, is score prediction. I think we're going to win, actually, Matt. I'm, 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 I'm not usually as confident as, as making predictions, and, and certainly for a large part of the season I haven't been. But uh, on the back of three defeats, I say mm. Salford, we were utterly abysmal. There's no dressing it up any other way. We were, we can't be as bad as that again. We deserve something against Wrexham. We absolutely deserve something against Newport. But uh, I think we're hurting. It's I'm not. It's not quite last chance saloon. But I think that if we lose on Saturday, we could potentially be six points adrift of the top seven, and that 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 is quite a gap then, isn't it? As the games tick down, I'm going to go for Morecambe two, Gillingham nil. Fair enough. I wouldn't expect you to not back your own team when you're still in with a chance of the top seven. I'm going to be positive as well. And just looking at that that frail defensive record and if we can remain solid and if we can get the first goal, because generally, well, we've seen the tweet going around on social media the last couple of days. There's there's not many teams that have, have not, uh, that are unbeaten when scoring the first goal. We are one of them. So I wrote down 2-1 to the Jules. Interesting. I mean, you talk about scoring first, actually, and that, that's been another one of our Achilles heels. Mm-hmm. is going behind in games and having to chase the game. Of course, it's a completely different mindset when you're chasing mm-hmm. to when you want to set the paces. And it's certainly away from home. We've fallen behind far too often. With the comeback Kings on the road, actually, I think we've won uh, four times 3-2 on the road, having been behind. Um, and we've won three times 2-1 on the road. So we know we can do it. And the one thing you will notice about a Jad Brannan team, Matt, is regardless of the match situation, we will never give up. We will always think that we can get something out of the game, no matter w- w- what the score is. Um, so if you are leading by a single goal in the last 10 minutes, don't think the points are in the bag by a long oh, way. Absolutely because not. Uh, no. because we, we, we will have that belief. And uh, I say, well, not quite last chance saloon, but uh, the three points would be handy for either team, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I, I must not lose. I mean, I'm not saying I would take a point on Saturday by any means, but uh, given the opposition... I don't think it would be an absolute disaster, but uh, I've got a sneaky feeling we're going to get the points. I think if I was offered a point, I might, I might accept it. And that's probably more to do with the fact that I've got a six-hour coach journey ahead of me as well. <laughs> and the weather <laughs> forecast, Matt, isn't great for Saturday either, unfortunately. Yeah, I, was, I, I did gonna, have a look. I was yeah, thinking about I was gonna say you could have a little beach, walk up to the, prom. the beach and that sort yeah. of thing. And then I looked and it said rain at two o'clock. I was like, yeah. absolutely brilliant. So, but It's only a 10-minute walk. It's a 10-minute walk from the stadium, one straight road, and you're on the beautiful... Lancashire Riviera, go and have your picture taken at the Eric Morecambe statue, go and do all the spits and bobs that you want to do. If it is a nice dry day, it's going to be a spectacular view. So I, I would recommend that you take that walk. If you're not no, going to we're take... hoping we get there early enough. And so we yeah, can yeah. Have a if, if you're not going to take the walk, there's, there, there are, there's plenty to do in and around the stadium. There's a couple of pubs close by as well. So uh, you should be well accommodated, hopefully. Looking forward to it. Like I say, it's always the mitt in the middle that ends up ruining a good and away day, isn't it? Unfortunately, the rest of it's always generally decent. The well, that's food, the thing, isn't the it? That's what they that say, isn't it? <laughs> that's what they say. Don't, don't don't let the football ruin the ruin what's otherwise a good weekend. Absolutely that. Dave, as always, it's been a real pleasure. Jules fans and Morecambe fans, if you're still watching at this point, then thank you very much. I will put Dave's details in the description at the bottom of the video. So please go and give him a follow because he knows absolutely everything there is to know about Morecambe. And if he doesn't know it, it's not worth knowing. Uh, Please keep hitting that like button. Please keep pressing subscribe and telling everybody about us. Like I say, Dave does a podcast as well, which is really, really good. Uh, So go and give him a follow, please. Like I say, and there's other good Morecambe pages as well. So I'll try and get their details put onto Twitter or at least in the description at the bottom of the video. As I've already said, myself and Ava are travelling up very early on the coach Saturday to the Mazuma Stadium to watch Jules take on Morecambe. So please come and say hello. Come and give us your score predictions in the ground. But until then, enjoy the rest of your week. And up the Jules. <laughs>